your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, September 8th to Saturday, September 14th. So last week, of course, we busted the door down to September in a huge way because, of course, we had Uranus go retrograde. We had Pluto creep back into that Capricorn energy on the first of the month. And I think many of us are still kind of adjusting to that particular energy because it's been no joke. We've had a lot of, let's call it foundational structural changes take place in our physical realms. Many of us feeling like we've been kind of slingshotted back into old situations, old circumstances, the old world that the old version of self had built, had created. Thank you, Pluto, retrograde and Capricorn energy for that. And of course, now with Uranus retrograde in this Taurus energy, we're starting to realize where it is that we're actually the problem. We're holding on to, let's call it people, places and things, the physical realm, the materialistic realm so freaking tightly, but yet we've been praying for change, but yet we're not doing anything about that change because we are comfortable in our discomfort. Does it make any sense? No. Do humans make sense? No. Will it work itself out? Absolutely. But because this is a fresh energy, because there's a lot of earth energy that we've been kind of flung back into, it feels very much like we're at a pause, like we're at a standstill, like we're not really going anywhere. And I suppose that would be true considering the fact that we're in an ending cycle, a closure cycle, if you will. So many people very anxiously anticipating this major growth spurt, this major progress when realistically speaking, we're not really being supported in any of that. Now, does that mean that nothing can change? No, of course, there's always changes to be made. We're in Virgo season. It's time to make the adjustments that we can, that we actually have control over in order to improve our physical realm, starting with our mental plane. And of course, many people losing their damn minds at this particular point. We are in Virgo season, ruled over by Mercury, who rules over the mental plane, who of course is still in his post-retrograde shadow period and trying to get up the heart and head in alignment. So again, we are being tested. I continuously say this, we're in a testing period. We're in a year of eight. The eight energy is testing us, mind, body, and soul, to see whether or not we're strong enough to override the old program, the old conditioning, the fear-based programming, in order to actually rise up into an empowerment energy where we, again, get to access our creator abilities. We, at this particular juncture, with Pluto retrograde in this Capricorn energy until November, we are going to be actively closing doors and little tiny baby steps moving forward. Just as we close something out, we're going to take one step forward and in initiating something new. That's how we do it. But so many people are so sick of this particular energy, just wanting to focus on the future, that they're totally bypassing the lessons that need to be integrated in this present moment in the here and now. Of course, on the second day of September, we have the new moon in Virgo pop off, which I think was a ripple effect, really creating a test in most people's mental planes. Again, we are merely a holographic projection of let's call it God source energy looking to have all of these individualized experiences, thus why we are individuals in the physical form. And yet here we are really kind of wondering why it is that everybody's losing their mind. Well, it's because this is the test of the mind. We have to get refined in our mind. We have to detox our mind. We have to get real and raw and vulnerable with ourselves and realize that we are creating a lot of the chaos, a lot of the craziness, a lot of the scarcity, a lot of the fears, the insecurities that we're currently experiencing. We're doing that. If you have control over your mental plane, you will be kind of seeing these tests and laughing at them, giving it no mind, no energy. Again, the Virgo energy is mind over matter. What you focus on in your mind is what you create in the physical realm. Many people, again, creating situations and circumstances that are not fun, are not favorable, are not really for their highest growth or highest evolvement, 
but yet that is what is comfortable. That is what is predictable. That is what they're most used to, thus stuck in the programming, stuck in the conditioning. Now, the new moon in Virgo kind of set the tone, if you will, on recognizing where the problematic areas are. And again, with all this earth energy, if you're experiencing shakeups and wakeups in particular areas of your life, why are you spending so much time and energy to stabilize it? Why are you trying to return it back to its original form? If there's a shakeup, if there's a wake up, it's because it's not working. It's because the foundation, the structure is not strong enough to house the continuous want, need and desire that you continue to pour out into the universe. And therefore shit needs to hit the fan. Things need to fall apart in order for humans as brilliant, most intelligent species. I say that with a lot of sarcasm to actually realize where it is that a change is needed. So many people right now having situations and circumstances pop off in their physical realm and they're going out of their way to try and smooth things over, to restore it back to its original form. When realistically, take the hint, things are popping off because they can't stay in that original form. Adjustments, improvements need to be made. Thus, Virgo season. And of course, we had Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires shift out of that Gemini energy, not before a pop off with Neptune and Pluto, though, that intensified things really put a different perspective, different mindset into current situations and circumstances. And now with Mars and Cancer energy, again, good old flashback to 2007, 2008, uh, we are definitely in a totally different mood, different attitude. Our goals, our visions, our dreams are going to feel like they have been paused upon, if you will, because think of the crab, okay? Cancer energy represents the crab. A crab walks sideways to get to where they want to go. Does that mean that they've lost sight of the vision? No, but it means that they can't take a direct path to it, a straightforward path to it. We have to kind of take a detour. We have to figure out, again, where our values have changed, where our priorities have changed, what matters most to us, what we're willing to fight, to defend, to protect that we've already built, that we've already created, and where we have to rise up and create better boundaries for ourselves to make sure that we are going to be safely protected as we make these particular adjustments to our physical realm. So what do we got going on this week, you may ask? Well, Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler over this Virgo season, will be re-entering Virgo energy. This takes place on the 9th. Now, we need to get to five degrees in Virgo energy before Mercury clears his post retrograde shadow period, which will be taking place on the 11th. Also on the 11th, we have the first quarter moon in Sagittarius energy popping off. Again, I'm gonna encourage you to take a listen to the September energy forecast if you haven't already. I talked about how ironic it is that we're having the first quarter moon, which is a point of action, a point of decision, a point of growth in Sagittarius, which is as optimistic, as positive as we could possibly be in thinking about our future, our goals, our visions, our dreams. Yet Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, moving into his rulership once again in this Virgo energy is focused in on the smaller details. So we have Sag energy illuminating the big picture that we would like to end up in. We have Mercury and Virgo energy focused in on the smaller details that makes up that greater, grander vision. So I think that's an interesting dynamic that we're going to be working with. Again, on the 11th, we are going to be moving into new foreign territory where our mental plane is concerned. We will be busting out of that post retrograde shadow period where in the fifth degree, we are moving forward with new information, new perspectives, new insight on what the problem actually is. Again, side note, it's you, it's your mental plane. It's the inner dialogue, the inner narrative. And we are going to make the adjustments needed in order to empower and encourage ourselves to adopt a better narrative, adopt a better perspective, adopt a better mind frame. Why, you may ask? Well, because shit's about to get really real. We are getting thrown into eclipse energies around the 11th. May I also just make the small note that September 11th has a huge residual energy harvesting effect. Take special note to what happened September 11th. That was a scripted event, let's call it, on a very important day that a very, let's call it, well-known religious character was actually, quote unquote, 
created, born, whatever you want to speculate. Okay, I, I don't want to get into a religious rant here. There is a reason why that particular event, the boom, boom, pow, happened on September 11th. Okay, it's an energy harvesting day. That's why mythological creatures, again, I'm air quoting, mythological creatures also have connection to that particular day. There is a residual energy. What happens on that day? You have the majority of the collective reflecting back on what happened. The majority of the collective opening up those wounds, okay? Understanding that we have more insight now, again, disclosure is a real thing, we have more insight now on what actually took place and that in itself turns our stomach in a way that didn't way back when it actually happened. And I'm not I'm not getting into those specific details. I'm just saying we have a lot going on on the 11th. We're going to expect major head pressure on the 11th. We'll talk about the ascension symptoms here in a minute, but you want to make sure that on the 11th, you understand that A, we're moving into new foreign territory, B, new insights information definitely come into the forefront, which is going to change our perspective, our inner dialogue, our inner narrative. We are going to have somewhat of a download on this next chapter that we are entering into. We are going to have an optimistic, confident approach with a high level criticism. Thank you, Virgo Energy, for that. And again, there's going to be all of these, let's call it residual energetic waves crashing upon us here on the 11th as well. So we really have to do the work to stay strong and stabilized in our own energy. Now, some notable mentions that I'd like to throw out there, because realistically, that's it sounds like a lot's going on. Technically, it's not. We're just kind of getting back up the speed, if you will. Thank you, Mercury's retrograde for that. We're getting back up the speed. But some notable mentions this week, we have the yearly opposition between the sun and Saturn, Mr. Karma himself and the sun shining a very bright light on us needing to reevaluate us needing a little bit of a reality check us kind of, you know, stepping back and considering all good, bad and otherwise we are in reflection mode with Mr. Saturn. Of course, he's in the Pisces energy. The sun is in Virgo energy. This is the healing axis. We are definitely going to have a little bit of a reality check where karma is concerned, roles and responsibilities are concerned. We are definitely going to be a little bit of a negative Nancy with that particular energy. We tend to lean more into the highly judgmental, highly critical phase of that Virgo energy. And of course, Mr. Saturn with his tough love life lessons, he doesn't really go easy on us ever and so there's a little bit of a negative narrative there's a lot of doubt a lot of pessimistic type of perspectives kind of creeping up we are basically feeling blocked we're feeling challenged we are feeling exhausted we have to balance the scales between our physical realm our physical reality virgo energy and our spiritual realm our emotional realm pisces energy and because there is this, let's call it break in realities, because again, we just got thrown back into the old world. Now we're seeing things from a different set of eyes. We're in a totally different mood, totally different attitude. And ultimately, this is definitely going to be a little bit harsh when it comes to criticizing and judging ourselves. Um, but we need to put the pressure on just a tad, if you will, uh, not to be productive, but to get to a particular point of acceptance. We have to reevaluate where it is that we're at, where it is that we want to go, how it is that we've gotten here. We have to kind of reconsider our boundaries, time, energy, effort, passion, inspiration. We have to figure out, again, pressurize to come up with some real life solutions to some long term problems that we definitely have to kick to the curb here before we can move on. And this is going to be an element because Mr. Saturn is involved. This is going to be an element where we feel blocked, we feel restricted, we feel held back, we feel limited in our energy, in our actions, in every sense of the word. We're going to get a little bit humbled here in a second. And of course, getting humbled is never fun. So that is the, a, a notable mention that I wanted to bring up. I also want to bring up the fact that this week we start with the moon in Scorpio, which is no joke shadow work okay fix water sign we end the week off with the moon in aquarius fixed air sign okay so basically we're we're doing some shadow work at the beginning 
of the week. We're going to have this first quarter moon pop off in Sag, try to restore a little bit of faith, a little bit of hope, a little bit of optimism, going to set us on the path of action, of decision, of a new truth, of a new purpose, new mission. We got all the, that good stuff kind of happening. We creep into the Capricorn energy, which again, destabilizes the hopes, the wishes, the dreams that we just built ourselves up in from that Sag energy. We have to anchor it in, actually have to get real raw and vulnerable in the physical realm of how it is that we are going to build the certain structures needed in order to actually bridge the gap from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be. And then we get thrown into the moon in Aquarius, which allows us to emotionally detach, to act as the observer, to see where it is, especially now that we have a futuristic vision, goal, and dream in mind, what it is that we have control over here in the physical realm, that we can change, that we can adjust, that we can improve. Thank you, Virgo season, for that particular energy to actually get ourselves there. Okay, so... I did mention we are getting thrown into the eclipse energies, a little bit of a reminder on the 17th. Again, if you haven't listened to your September energy forecast, you're really doing a disservice to yourself. On the 17th, we have a full moon lunar eclipse taking place in Pisces energy, giving us a taste of what it is that we will be experiencing collectively, karmically speaking from now until 2027. This is no joke. It's on the Pisces Virgo axis, healing, physical realm, mental plane versus emotional and spiritual plane. We have to strike a balance. So many people going through spiritual psychosis right now. Thank you, Saturn retrograde and Pisces for that to basically deconstruct where it is that people have thrown themselves into the spiritual practice with no anchoring whatsoever, no grounding practices whatsoever, where everybody is just throwing themselves into this new age spiritual belief system without any foundation or structure on how to anchor that particular energy in and how to integrate that particular wisdom and knowledge into the physical realm. So many people living in, let's call it the uh, spiritual state of psychosis versus the real realm, the real reality. This is why people are losing their damn minds. Okay. So we have to strike a balance and bring, you know, realism back into it here. We are spiritual beings on a human experience, not the other way around. We have to essentially uh, be integrating these particular tough love life lessons. Saturn in this retrograde is an, a, a real life look, internalized look of where it is that, again, we're deluding ourselves. We're running away from our problems. We are using situations and circumstances to numb ourselves from actually doing the work. Everybody wants to live in la la land. Nobody willing to actually do what is necessary here in the physical realm under the parameters of that this physical realm operates under to actually operate as a spiritual being in this human experience, you're either human at this point and doing all of the worst things that we're seeing on the collective, or you're so far into the spiritual experience that you're not even human anymore. This is why you get people saying, oh, I live in the 5D. I live in the 5D. No, you don't. You got a physical body, okay? You can live in the 5D when you're dead and you don't have a physical body. If you have a physical body, you are not living in 5D. You cannot, okay? So many people have gotten caught up in this delusionary spiritual phase that this is why we're having the mental health, health crisis right now that we're having. The whole point is to be a human, to have a human experience, but understand that you are a eternal soul. And when the physical body gives out and you return back to source and this experience is merely a blip in comparison to the lifetime eternal experiences in which you've had, are going to continue to have, again, this physical realm, this physical experience will be laughable to the soul, to the spirit once you return to source. But it cannot be laughable right now. We have a mission to do. So many people copping out on doing the work. It's getting a little bit frustrating. I know you probably tune into me every week and you're just like, oh, here she goes again talking about everybody needing to do the work, got to do the shadow work, got to boss up, got to do this. Until you are walking the fine line between the physical realm and the spiritual realm, between the left part and right part hemisphere of your brain, between the physical form and the spiritual essence, until you can strike a perfect balance, you are still needing to do the work. Okay. I'm not speaking from a high horse here. I wake up, I do the work every freaking day. I deal with crazy people. I mean that as nicely as possible. I deal with crazy people 
every day. It's getting exhausting. People are not crazy because of this spiritual realm. They're crazy because they're not doing the work to understand psychology, to understand biology, to understand the inner workings of what it means to be a human, okay? People have thrown themselves into one extreme over the other and having a hard time finding their balance back. And I cannot tell you how important it is being in this year of eight, being in these last karmic chapters. Thank you, Saturn, in this Pisces energy. Thank you, Pluto, in this Capricorn energy. Cannot emphasize enough. This is an ending and a closure cycle. Karmically speaking, people are losing their damn minds because they have failed to understand that we are human beings that need to integrate the spiritual wisdom and knowledge in the physical form, in the human experience. This does not mean that we need to abandon all things human. That would be a disservice to the physical form that we so graciously got provided with in order to come to this particular dimensional earth plane and explore the polarized and dualistic natures of such. That's what we're here to do, to strike a balance. Now, yes, there are some magical things going on, good, bad, and otherwise. But again, the magical things that are happening in the spiritual war, in the other dimensions that overlay our human existence, that is merely a test of your ability to stay centered, mind, body, and soul. I know it's a very tough thing when you're out there in survival mode, but again, understanding psychology, understanding the biological chemical system of your physical meat suit is the absolute key to understanding how it is that you need to be operating in your day-to-day -day life. So many people are avoiding doing the work. You got to do the work. Okay, so we're being thrown into eclipse season. What does that mean? Well, it means that the closer that we get to the 17th, the less and less control we're actually going to have, not only over the events in our physical realm, but in the clarity, the understanding that we all so much crave. Let me also tell you this. You need to get very comfortable with not knowing, okay? Knowing is the intellectual, mental planes want, need, and desire to feel in control. The more you spend in your intellect, the less you're actually connecting to your intuition. You cannot be intellectually driven and intuitively driven at the same time. To think is to remove yourself from your spiritual self, let's call it. To intellectualize everything is to remove intuition and magic. And again, we have to blend the two, right? Like everybody wants to say that science and spirituality are two different things. No, they, they do not exist without each other. They need to merge in a healthy balance in order for us to operate in the healthy balance that we are here to accomplish, here to achieve. That's the whole point of coming to this earth plane. Can you be put into a physical body under the parameters of time and space, such as the physical earth plane is? Can you be put in situations that feel very real and still remind yourself that you are a spiritual being? that this is merely a blimp in your eternal existence. People ask me all the time, like, why, you know, our higher selves, why would we choose to come here if we know all that it's all pain and torture and everything else? Like so many people want to get back to source and just kick the shit right out of their higher self for even opting to come into earth. Well, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't, if you're an eternal being, okay, bored as shit because you know what unconditional love is and there ain't no fun on any other dimensional planet unless you're coming to a dimensional planet that actually has contrast, which is polarity and dualistic natures, meaning black versus white, cold versus hot, good versus bad, you know, happiness versus sadness. That this is the only dimensional plane that offers us emotion. Gather that. Okay, sit on that concept for a, for a moment. Have all these people angry as shit that their higher self chose this life for them when the whole point of coming here is to see how long you can go in this physical earthly matrix before you remember who it is that you are, before you remind yourself of your power, before you activate the higher version of self to be the operator of this physical body. That's why we do shadow work. It's to eliminate the conditioning and the programming of the physical form. It's to allow the soul to actually take the driver's seat. That's what this work is about. So many people not understanding that. So many people just taking 
it, way out of context, creating delusional states for them to live in. It just, it is mind boggling, mind boggling to me how people can, you know, continue to wake up every day and continue to tell people that they live in the 5D. If you actually understood what the 5D was in that particular concept, you would know how ridiculous that sounds. You are a physical form, okay? You're, you have a physical body. The minute that you don't have a physical body, sure, you can talk about the 5D. Until then, I wouldn't utter those words for as long as the physical body lives because it's ridiculous. Anywho, we are also approaching the equinox. The equinox comes when the sun moves into Libra season. The equinox is equal day to equal night. The equinox is the rebalancing of the karmic scales, which means that the scales need to be out of whack in order to bring them into balance. Think about cancer season. Think about the solstice. That's when shit really hit the fan with the karmic chapters that you thought you were going to be experiencing that got removed pretty quick because they weren't of the highest vibration and frequency for your soul's mission, your soul's purpose. And most people sitting around crying over the spilled milk of, oh, I didn't think I'd be doing this at this particular point in time. I think I, I thought I was going to be doing this. I thought I was going to be in this relationship. I thought I was going to be in this job. I thought, well, guess what? Your higher self knows better than you do. Your very small minded ego self was dreaming a dream that was so minuscule in the greater grander plan of your higher source, your higher spirit. And instead of sitting around and crying over spilled milk and being wah, 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 poor what was me, instead of doing that, we need to realize that anything that got removed out of our lives was because it was distracting us from our greater mission. Anything that was removed out of our lives was saving us from repeating past patterns and behaviors. Anything that was removed out of our lives was removed because we wouldn't have removed it on our own. And again, karmically speaking, shit hits the fan as we move closer to the equinox. And lucky for us, and I say that with a lot of sarcasm, lucky for us, not only are we approaching the equinox, but we will also be in eclipse season while doing just that. The equinox actually takes place smack dab in the middle of eclipse season. That's going to be an interesting tune for us to all experience. Uh, we at this particular point have no clue what eclipse season is going to throw at us. And the fact that it's taking place in Pisces energy, you know, karma is going to be unraveling. That's just where we're at. And, you know, as we move into the Libra season and we under a normal circumstance where we weren't in an eclipse season would have had the power to make the adjustments to bring our lives back into a state of balance. We are not going to have that particular power and we are going to get chewed up and spit out and put on the path that we failed to put ourselves upon. And many of us will bitch and complain and whine and cry through the whole freaking process knowing damn well that if you were leaning into your spiritual self when you have to, not just when it's convenient for you, you would know that nothing is happening to you. Everything is happening for you. Therefore, why are you resisting the changes that you know you should have made that you didn't make that now the universe is going to make for you? So we're going through it. Now, that was a little bit of a rant, just trying to kind of paint the picture on what it is that we're currently dealing with. Let me address a couple of things on my homework list, and then I will jump right back into ranting and raving. First of all, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping beautiful emojis in the comment section below. I want to thank you for showing up for your fellow community members when they are expressing hardship, when they are expressing struggle. Y'all are beautiful little beings that are really, really coming out and supporting each other through what is a very, very tough time for many. Again, we're in Virgo season. This is a test of the mind. We're really getting put through it. And of course, this beautiful community that we've built, I just love when you all just come in and swoop and save each other and give each other pep talks. I want to thank you so much for that. Let's keep that particular vibe up. I want to thank those of you that have jumped over to Patreon, even as a free member, just to get the notifications that YouTube refuses to give you, even though you've been a beautiful subscriber of mine, probably since the beginning. YouTube does not like me. We have been exploring this particular topic and theme for many, many moons now, that my content is being restricted, that nobody gets those notifications. And even when you do, you get locked out of the chat. I myself last week got locked out of my own group chat. Thank you, YouTube, for that. So at least on Patreon, you get the notifications when I post new content. 
And for those of you that have become paid subscribers over there, I thank you so much for the love and support. Again, I'm going to have to remind you, if you haven't listened to the September energy forecast as of yet, you really got to stay ahead of the game. If you haven't listened to your Zodiac forecast for the month of September, you're going to want to download that either from my website one by one or access all 12 over on my Patreon. If you haven't downloaded your Virgo season e-guide as of yet, I'm going to recommend you do that as well, because again, we're in the thick of it. You need to capture what is going on right now. We're going to have to reference back to this particular point in the calendar once we enter into 2025 for good reason. A lot of that, Mars. Mars and Pluto, I'm going to say. Pluto, for the most part, we know what's up from now until November. We're just, you know, cleaning up the debris of the old world, the old reality that the old version of self had built, created, and therefore now needs to kind of, you know, bring a closure to. We know what's going on with Mr. Pluto, but Mars, man, Mars is going to be retrograding here soon. He's going to carry us into 2025 and then revisiting this particular cancer energy that we're just kind of adjusting to. That's why I create the workbooks, the e-guides, the forecasts that I do in order for you to stay ahead of the game, to stay in alignment and to have some place to reference back to. Because when I, we bust into the new year and I say, OK, what was going on, you know, early September for you, you're going to say, uh, geez, uh, I have no clue. I don't even know what I ate yesterday. Well, if you had the e-guide available, you'd be able to flip back and say, oh, my Jesus, that's right. That's when I had to move. That's when I got a new job. That's when my relationship broke up. That's when I got thrown into legal matters, whatever the case may be, because you know, Mars, God of war, he's fighting for something in a cancer energy. It's about our worth, our values, our home, our familial connections about the foundation of what actually matters the most to us. And let me just say that this is taken like this Mars and cancer energy. Once he retrogrades, there's a kickback to 2007, 2008. What does that sound like? That also sounds like Pluto. Pluto entered into this Capricorn energy in 2008. So again, there's a lot of reminiscing kickbacks going on right now that we need to bring into perspective in order to actually wrap up the particular life lesson and integrate that shit into our being before we actually get to move on. And so again, download the guides, listen to the forecast, do the work. Okay, enough of that. Let's jump into some ascension symptoms here. So yeah, as I've been stating, people are losing their damn minds. We knew that they would. We knew that they would even dating back to when Saturn actually entered into Pisces energy, because of course, this is the fall of religion. This is the fall of spirituality. This is the fall of delusion. This is the thickness of confusion. This is us wrapping up a 30 year cycle. Mr. Saturn takes 30 years to move through all of the zodiac signs. He's doing his own little wrap up cleansing period here in his own spiritual dominion. And because he is going through it, we're going through it. Because this Pisces energy is both intuitive insight, spiritual insight, you know, dreams, creativity. It also rules over fear, confusion, escapism, numbing. And again, because Saturn is the builder, the architect, if you will, of our physical realm, uh, right now he's in deconstruction mode right? He is like, okay, I'm the general foreman of this particular lovely little earth plane that I've created. And guess what? The old paradigm has got to go. Let's bring in the wrecking ball. Let's bust through this shit. It doesn't matter how many people I actually convert to the other side and soul and spirit, meaning they lose their life. They lose their mind. They lose their physical, the, the physicality doesn't matter because the spiritual war is going to continue to rage on. In the eyes of the gods, if you will, it doesn't matter whether we have a physical form or a spiritual form, the war is still being, you know, fought. And so Saturn is kind of bringing the wrecking ball in saying, you know what? I was once building this beautiful house and guess what? I look at it now and it has done nothing but exhaust me, nothing but depleted my time, my energy, my resources, my efforts. I don't even believe that this particular floor plan is going to be the floor plan for me anymore. So guess what? I'm bringing the wrecking ball in. Let's destroy this MFR, okay, and let's start from scratch. 
because the Pisces energy is involved, there is death endings and closures that is needed. We have to, you know, wrap this cycle up before we can start fresh, start new. And Saturn will be starting fresh and starting new when he moves into Aries energy in 2025. That's going to be essentially when we get to rebuild the societal structures of new earth in our own realms and on the collective stage. But there's a bunch of junk, a bunch of gunk preventing us from building the kind of vision that we want to be building right now. And a lot of this is because of old understandings, old belief systems, old delusions. Um, and again, when I, when Saturn first moved into Pisces, I said that there was going to be a huge amount of people that cross over under this influence. And it is not disappointing. I mean that in as, a, a, as nice as possible, meaning I'm not making fun of people who have crossed over. Trust me. I just had a week of death adversaries. Okay. It has been a hard week for me mentally and emotionally, especially with the fact that I know better spiritually. I know that it's a celebration of life when you lose the physicality and your soul actually crosses back over and goes back to source. I know that something to celebrate, not something to mourn, but my physical body with this emotional, let's call it compass with this, you know, mental plane perspective, um, our physical bodies literally respond to loss. Okay. It doesn't matter if I know better that that soul, that spirit is an eternal flame and is having the best time of their life over, you know, back on the other realm, um, in other dimensions with soul sore family. Okay. I know that, but there's still an emptiness of that particular presence, not being a part of this physical world anymore. And it is that void, that darkness, that space that the physical body responds to thus mourning, thus grief, thus sadness. Okay. So when I make, I'm not making light of it. I'm not saying like, oh, you know, Saturn isn't disappointing. He sure killed a lot of people this year. Uh, that's not the vibe. Okay. And I, I'm getting a little bit more and more concerned about what I'm able to freely talk about because people either are a not emotionally or intellectually capable of understanding what I'm saying without getting triggered and activated again, do the work. That's a shadow realm aspect. And then B People are just so on the edge of their instability with their mental plane that I sometimes feel like I might be creating more harm than doing good because of the concepts that people are not able to grasp in the way that I mean for them to be portrayed. And so you're going to get a bunch of people saying, oh, my God, she just said that the amount of people dying is, is disappointing. It's not what I meant. Okay. Got to level up. Let's open that mind. Let's expand that mind. Okay. Thank you, Jupiter and Gemini for that. Um, let's expand on that. Let's understand that we are spiritual beings having a human experience, that the human experience allows for sadness and grief because we're emotional beings. That's why we come to this dimension. And even though I have a lot of insight on what happens when you die here, and I understand that this is merely a blip in our eternal you know, life experience as a soul space member. And that I know that it's a celebration to leave the physical earth plane and go back home. There's still sadness. Okay. I'm a human being I'm not here trying to say to myself, Oh, well, don't be sad. It's just fake. You know, nothing's real. Nothing's real. That that's delusion, my friends. Okay. This is a very real experience or else we wouldn't come here. We would have nothing to gain by coming here. This would just be, you know, like a drug trip. That's not what this is. This is very real. What we do in this earth plane dictates the overall evolution of not just our race, but all other races that contributed to who it is that we are as the humankind. Okay. And again, that's a complex concept for a lot of people to wrap their heads around that will totally take it out of context and, and go into Delulu land as well. This is a very trying time to balance out spirituality with physical reality. This is a very trying time for you to understand that your soul and your spirit and your human body, that they need to interact with one another, that they need to integrate, that they need to operate in a state of wholeness. It's a very trying time. That being said, we do have to realize where it is that there are some issues in our mental plane, in our inner dialogue, in our attention, our ability to give attention to good, bad and things otherwise, because we need to start weeding out the bad. We have to start weeding out the weaknesses. Again, we're in Virgo season. This has everything to do with detoxing 
our mind, our body, our soul. We have to get rid of the heaviness, rid of the weight, rid of the fear, rid of the doubts, the insecurities that many of us have found comfort in for a very long time because we've had no choice. We've had to make peace with it. But now it's time to put that part of ourselves behind us. We are gaining more and more insight, more and more perspective. We are gaining more and more information. And again, the information part, especially, you know, with the internet, with the access that we have now to connect with one another, to do some research and digging and share those particular, you know, findings with other people. People are not taking the time to step away from the internet, stay away from absorbing the information and actually use it in a practice in their day-to-day -day lives to integrate the wisdom, the knowledge in which they are currently learning. Thus, information overload. Thus, head spinning. Thus, the merging of very, very, you know, intricate, concepts that put people in a state of confusion and you know unfortunately delusion so this is why it's so important to know thyself to trust thyself this is why it's so important for us to step back after we've gone through a certain learning and absorbing chapter to actually put it into practice so many people walking around knowing better but not actually doing better thus virgo season it's time for us to get our shit together for us to get organized but the trust that we actually have to be gaining now in not knowing is going to be a hard pill for many of us to swallow. We have to find comfort in our lack of clarity, in the lack of actual knowing. And that's where faith comes in, right? Belief and faith are only in existence in the absence of actual knowing. And so we are, again, balancing the intellect, Virgo energy, with our intuition, Pisces energy. We are balancing what we know to be true of the physical realm, Virgo energy, with what it is that we know to be true in our spiritual realm, Pisces energy. And this is why from now until 2027, when the nodes of the moon shift on this Pisces and Virgo axis for good, and that's going to be taking place again early 2025, we are getting a taste of this particular learning chapter here in this eclipse season coming at us here in just a couple of weeks and it's going to be a very very intense learning chapter for the collective we're already starting to see it so with this fluctuation of energy with this fluctuation of circumstance with this fluctuation of structures taking place right now we also have to understand that we kind of see those particular fluctuations in our physical form. Many of us are going to be experiencing a cold snap, if you will. The temperature fluctuations that our physical body is going through at this particular juncture, the coldness is definitely indicative of where it is that, again, there is a slower pace Again, earth energy slows the pace down. There's a slower pace of energy. We're being projected back into the past to wrap up certain cycles. That cold energy is kind of, I'm going to say, paralyzing us to a certain extent to be in this present moment, to realize where it is that we have to nurture ourselves, nourish ourselves back to a place of comfort. If the energy is hot, that's rapid movement. That's like, you know, things coming at us all the time. The energy flowing through your physical form, when it's hot, it means that there's an influx of energy coming in. We're not receiving a huge influx of energy right now. We have the energy that we need. We have the downloads within us that we need. Now we actually have to unpack them and do something with them. Thus, the fluctuation in temperature, thus us kind of taking a cold spurt, if you will. Many of us will be operating more on the cold energies than the hot in order for us to wrap up particular cycles of the old, again, cold old, in order for us to actually dive into the new. And that is when, um, of course, when we go through this eclipse season, when we move through the equinox energy, we're going to have an acceleration and we are going to start feeling that acceleration around the 11th. So again, this is time to walk the walk and talk the talk. This is time for us to put into practice what it is that we've already learned. This is time for us to take all of the wisdom and all of the knowledge and actually do something about it here in the physical realm. 
Yes, we are going to have a lot of head pressure. Again, Virgo season being the state in which we realize what's going on in our mental plane, again, Mercury ruled, and understanding what we actually manifest out of that information, out of that focus, out of that narrative, out of that attention. This is time for us to, again, detox our mental plane defrag the old narrative, really understand where it is that we could do better. And because we know better, now we actually have to be better. And yes, the foundations that are getting shaken, rattled and stirred, they are not meant for us to go like and, and try to put it back into form. This is like reminding me of Humpty Dumpty, right? He fell off the damn wall. He broke into a million pieces. You can't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. You just can't. He's never going to be the same. Okay, he's never going to be the same. You can try to keep afloat. You can try to keep all, let's say you're juggling. You're trying to keep all the balls kind of, you know, up in a rhythm, up in the air. The minute that one ball drops, the other balls are sure to follow. Does that mean that we have to totally scrap everything that we've invested our time, energy, and effort in? Absolutely not. Is it time to overexert ourselves and try our damnedest to put things back into the state in which they originally showed up? 100% no, that would be counter counterproductive at this particular juncture. What we need to realize is that when foundations in our lives get shook, shook up, it's because we need to make adjustments. Maybe, you know, maybe a couple of bricks have crumbled in that wall. Maybe the foundation has a couple of more cracks that make it a little bit not as safe to build your beautiful brand new house upon. Maybe we have to go back and mend some fences and maybe those fences will never look like they originally did, but they still serve the same kind of purpose and they just appear in a different kind of way. We are in adjustment period, not just because we're in Virgo season, but because of Pluto, again, trying to wrap up this Capricorn energy. And now Mars kind of throwing us back to where it is that we were at in 2007, 2008, and what it is that we need to kind of do as far as recognizing the foundation, the system, the structures that we've built, either in our you know physical realms or our emotional realms or our mental realms. And, you know, show up, hold space, hold the line for things that are working and show up and totally deconstruct and destroy the things that aren't. This is how we essentially put things back in order. And we're in Virgo season. So it's all about taking the chaos, reconstructing it into a new order, into a new system. So the foundation, of course, doesn't feel so safe and secure under our feet. Many of us having a lot of leg cramps or tremors or Charlie horses. Again, we hold fear. We store fear in our kneecaps in the lower extremities. Of course, you have to put one foot in front of the other in order to actually blaze a new path forward. And you have to put the one foot in front of the other in order to clean up the debris of the past. And we're having kind of like leg lock. I, I want to call it leg lock. We're having leg lock at this particular juncture. We're just standing still. That's not necessarily a bad thing. We are in Virgo season. Mercury is in charge of Virgo season, which means that this is a good time to stand still, to have this leg lock, to take inventory, take stock, to reevaluate what's going on in our physical realms. What is demanding our attention? What is demanding change? What is demanding some sort of new system foundation being born out of the things that have crumbled and fallen apart. This is a time for us to kind of gain perspective again in our mental plane on where some improvements need to be made. Now, we've been going through a major detox. This is Virgo season. It's time to detox our mind, our body, our soul. And this detox is definitely being emphasized here in the physical form on our gut our gut health, right? This is more than just the food that you put into your body. It's the information that you bring in. It's the narrative in which you hold. It's the perspectives that you hold as well. We have to detox. We have to refine. We have to use discernment, Virgo energy. Many people, and I myself, use the words, you know, highly judgmental, highly critical, when realistically what it is, is using discernment of what is working, what isn't, what needs to stay, what isn't, what needs to go. And we will make those adjustments, we will make those improvements, we will make those changes and transformations, and then we will work really hard to bring a state of balance, peace, harmony, and acceptance back into our lives. But that doesn't take place until we move into Libra season. And of course, Libra season is being kind of jacked up, 
if you will, this year around uh, by eclipse season. So we have a little bit of a whirly swirly karmic, let's call it potion being thrown at us in a time when we should be achieving peace, harmony and balance in our new realms and our new realities. I want to talk about the fact that our dreamscape has been absolutely whack as of late. Now, I'm not going to, I have, as you know, sleep is something that, you know, not many of us come very easily by as of late. Um, I hadn't been sleeping well. The past two, three nights, I have slept straight through the night. It was an absolute miracle, you know, to wake up in the morning and realize that I slept through a whole night because this is something that hasn't happened to me literally in years, okay, like years. Um, I slept the whole night. Mind you, had the most horrific, most troubling, most most just heavy weighted dreamscapes in those days of pure sleep. Now, there's a couple of reasons for this. First of all, the Virgo Pisces axis is healing our unconscious realms. That's where the Pisces energy comes. That's our dreamscape. We have the Virgo energy doing a number on our physical form, our physical circumstances, our mental plane. And as we've been talking about very frequently, especially where dreamscaping is involved, what we experience in our dreamscape, whether it is our unconscious selves trying to help us work through, you know, very complex topics and themes that our waking selves just don't dare to dabble in, or whether we are astral projecting or astral traveling into different environments in order for us to see things differently that stays with us in the waking hours, you know, of our waking lives. Either way, it, it does tweak. It does adjust the way that we see ourselves, the way that we see certain topics and themes, the way that we see certain people. A lot is happening in our dreamscapes, helping us to process some heavy emotions, some heavy karma that we in our waking lives just would not choose to throw ourselves into. And sometimes the most profound impact that we can have on, you know, really focusing in on a topic and theme that we would avoid like the plague in our waking lives is to have a dream about it. And it sticks with you in the run of your day, good, bad, or otherwise. And so, you know, it's kind of like a double-edged sword. Like I, I'm grateful, I'm thankful that I slept full, full stop throughout the whole night. I'm fully grateful for that. However, the full amount of time that I spent in a, in a dreamscape that was so uncomfortable, so, so troubling, um, not my most favorite. Like, you know, is it too much to ask to sleep through the whole night and have positive dreams? I guess so, because I haven't had that type of situation, circumstance or scenario in a very, very long time. So I know our dreamscapes are popping off because again, we, we need to bring things into balance and sometimes we need a different perspective illuminated to us, which only our unconscious selves can illuminate for us or our higher selves if we're in an astral straight or an astral state, mind you. Um, but at the same time, things are changing rapidly and we are going to feel that acceleration not only in our dreamscape, not only in the intensities of our dreamscape as we approach eclipse season, but we're also going to feel it in our daily lives. Those particular concepts, that topic, that theme, that overall feeling of emotion that you experience in your dreamscape will likely linger a long, long time as you're waking up. And just a reminder, um, just some of my, my dream fascination coming out. Uh, we forget 95% of the dream content that we had the, the previous night within the first five minutes of waking. So anything that lingers on past those five minutes, true, true message. Okay. Very important topic and theme there. And even more than that, it, it is very cryptic in nature. And as we get into this eclipse season, especially where the Pisces energy is being influenced, we are going to have to really understand how our soul, our spirit, talks, communicates, which of course is not words, not, you know, the way that humans interact. Um, there's a lot of symbology. There's a lot of dream interpretation. There's a lot of psychology that is needed in, you know, deciphering that dream content to truly understand the message that our higher self is trying to send us in a dream state, dream form that we wouldn't accept in our waking state. And so I would expect that the dreamscape is going to continue to be heavy, continue to be weighted, continue to be littered with crypticness. 
on what it is that we have to focus on, what it is that we have to reframe, what it is that we have to heal, most importantly. Again, huge karmic purge with Saturn retrograde and Pisces energy, Pluto now retrograde and Cap energy, and a little bit of Mars in this Cancer energy uh, to give us a good throwback, to give us a contrast on where it is that we were at 2007, 2008, and where it is that we're currently at now. So of course, those aren't all of the ascension symptoms that could pop up. We're still talking like normal cold flu allergy type of situation. We're still talking about bubble guts. We're still talking about seeing orbs. We're talking about being overly sensitive to our sensory system. All of that is just kind of normal ascension repercussions, if you will. Um, the ones that we talk about here in this forecast is kind of like the ones that we need to be most focused upon. And I would say just being in Virgo season uh, with the week that we ca have coming at us and most importantly, the equinox and the eclipse energy that we're about to be thrown into, I would say that the focus should be on our mental planes, really kind of reframing, restructuring our perspectives, reframing that inner dialogue, reframing what once was, what currently is, and what could be. So guys, that's all the information that I have for you for this week's Ascension Symptom Forecast. Of course, I want to thank you for showing up, not only for me, but showing up for yourself. I want to encourage you to take a listen to all of the forecasts out there and stay ahead of this energetic game that we are all in. I hope you have the kindest of weeks. I hope you navigate it with as much grace, as much ease as possible. I'm sending you nothing but love and we'll talk to you soon.